This is Community Board 8 Speaks. The community boards are staffed by volunteers who contribute their time and efforts towards making our neighborhood a better place. And tonight, we're going to actually look at a, a, another type of organization, which are neighborhood associations. And we've got um, two terrific organizations here, which are um, Carnegie Hill Neighbors and East 86th Street Merchants and Residents Association. Lo van der Valk is the president of Carnegie Hill Neighborhoods and Neighbors, and Elaine Walsh is the president of East 86th Street Merchants and Residents Association. Thanks for being here. Thank this you for having, having us. A great, exciting program because two of the most fantastic areas in the world. We were talking before the show, and um, I'm going to actually um, try to bounce the questions against each each of you to compare Good. and contrast. So uh, first of all, let's start with the Carnegie Hill Neighbors, OK? okay. Um, what is the mission and purpose of Carnegie Hill Neighbors? Uh, Carnegie Hill Neighbors uh, was founded about uh, almost 40 years ago, in 1970, uh, originally to oppose the construction of large buildings and as a second goal to create a historic district. Because uh, by 1970, the Landmarks Commission had been around for almost five years. And uh, as, as time progressed, and we were successful in, in some of those activities, although it took many years, uh, we also became a quality of life organization. And we were interested in improving the quality of life in the neighborhood, including planting of trees. We took on the planting of the malls, which in the financial crisis of the late 70s became uh, many dog runs on Park Avenue. We took that on and we planted the uh, seasonally, meaning tulips in the spring and begonias in the summer. We planted Park Avenue malls. And later in the 90s, early 90s, when there was a huge crime wave in New York City, we, we added a uh, security program, which were neighborhood patrol cars. And, uh, and that is still going on. We've kept, uh, both programs have grown and, and and now more recently, we've, we've been concerned not only with uh, planting trees in the neighborhood and maintaining, uh, giving guidance to maintaining tree pits, which is now uh, done by every building, but uh, also looking to the stores and store signage and the appearance of the avenues. And that's been our latest thrust. Uh, obviously, we continue to be concerned about uh, the, the malls on Park Avenue and, and crime. And uh, I might add, and we, we possibly get into that later, we have expanded the historic district, and I think I would like to comment more on that. Elena, well, how about East 86th Street? What's the mission and purpose of your organization? Well, it, it's interesting because we were legally established in 2006, but the history of the, the activity and the wanting to make Eight, East 86th Street corridor, more of a livable area, really started in the 70s with a range of different task force focused really on crime and safety back then. And it was not a, uh, uh, an incorporated organization. They were volunteers, task forces. And so you would get started and stop. And then in, I'd say, about 2002, we had a task force uh, I was chairing the Economic Development Committee of Community Board 8, and there were a number of issues going on up at 86th Street, again, safety, but also the quality of life, what was going on with the different types of stores, the quality. Uh, <clears throat> and so we worked with a number of residents and, and merchants and property owners, and from that, we established the East 86th Street Merchants and Residents Association. We felt at that point, in order for us to be legitimized and taken seriously, we would incorporate, and so we have become a nonprofit. And the focus really is on, similar to what uh, Carnegie Hill does, uh, on quality of life issues, the planting of trees. We thought what we had to do, if anybody's been to 86th Street on the east side, you can see that it, it becomes almost like a bizarre area in that there are, you know, uh, vendors on the street, uh, whether they're food or, or general merchandise. Um, we have a taco van. There are various things that are going on that are not appealing to you. And we heard from so many people, they wouldn't go down 86th Street anymore. They were diverting to the side streets which then took away foot traffic for the stores. And so we've really been looking at how do we make 
that corridor more appe appealing for both residents and people who go to work in the area and those who pass through. We are an express stop at 86th Street and we get a lot of tourists from the museums. And so we've looked at, we, we've been dealing with graffiti, um, cleaning of sidewalks, very basic beautification issues that we're hoping will give people a better sense of what the, the block is on, like. And we're also educating people around the issues of, of signage uh, with Carnegie Hill. We did a joint project to um, develop a brochure where people can learn what the zoning is mm -hmm. and then what's uh, legal of, regarding either uh, awnings or canopies or signage. You know, signage signs should only be 12 inches high. And if you look on 86th Street, mm -hmm. you know, they're as tall as me in some places, to be honest with Indeed. you. So what we're doing is trying to get the community, the residents there, involved. We're also working very hard with the landowners or property owners and merchants, but we have a real problem with landowners and merchants. They're absentee landlords, and when you have a chain store that's headquarters in someplace else, they don't have a commitment to the community. And uh, what we're trying to do now is really work with them to join us in making this a vibrant area. I mean, we, uh, one of our accomplishments um, is after many, many years, uh, we are installing historic lampposts back on 86th Street. Yes. And um, I want to thank former assembly member Pete Granis for it and current assembly member uh, Micah Kellner, who really have pushed and worked with the Department of Transportation to, we had the money, we gave them money to, um, through a grant from Pete Granis to the city, but we now want them to spend it, and they've had the money for four years, and we're just starting now. Mm -hmm. So things do take a while. To, and you you to were get saying it. before the show, it's gotten started over in the Far East? Yes, between York yeah. and East End, I would have preferred to start in the middle of the block and go down, mm -hmm. but we've also had some major construction on some of the streets, so uh, maybe that was okay, but you know, I would like to see by the real spring this isn't really the real spring. But by yes. June, I'd like to see that they're finished that project. That's great. And that would be a, a real eye-opener for people to see. Because you know? those who have passed it have commented and called us that, wow, they're nice, and how did that happen? And now we have to tell them how it happened and get them involved. So. Yeah, you shared with me before a sketch of the future vision. So um, I don't know if we're, can, is that allowed to be shown? Well, it's or, a vision. I don't, I don't even know if you can get it on the camera, okay. but I've got to tell you, this does not look like 86th Street for sure. So uh, That's a vision. That's yeah. a concept. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to zoom in here. So if anyone has high-definition TV, make sure you zoom in on this. Okay. So, yeah. But we, what you're seeing there are, are, are trees, and we've been planting and fixing the tree guards that the trucks break all the time. Mm -hmm. But you're going to see benches and nice back bike racks that, that bring all of the street furniture together uh, and, you know, baskets for trash and all. And... Um, we just think it'll open up, it'll be appealing, but it'll also give us a flow of, tra you know, for foot traffic there, too. Because right now it's very hard to walk down 86th Street. But with the design that we envision, mm -hmm. um, and this is the first step, we, we think it'll make a difference. And, and people will also be more positive about, wow, this is a boulevard. This is, you know, the... Uh, a boulevard, a wide, beautiful street, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's what we're looking for. That's very exciting. Yeah, we're excited about so, it. So, you began to talk about um, some of your new, new um, challenges. Um, do you want to continue with that? Well, um, yeah. I, I also want to say we are a uh, membership organization, mm -hmm. and uh, and we're run by by volunteers. And uh, every um, every uh, spring and every fall, we put out a newsletter. Just want to hold this up. This is the oh, fall newsletter mm -hmm. of uh, of uh, last um, of of two oh oh eight. It's uh, thirty two pages, and it uh, it allows uh, it allows uh, our stores to advertise. And that the the the, the, the newsletter is thirty two pages. It's self financing, and uh, we also cover uh, cover our quality of life issues. Tree planting, store signage, uh, uh, vendors, uh, the issue of vendors, and we have uh, two pages uh, that deal with landmark issues. And uh, so this is how we keep our neighbors uh, uh, informed. 
We also have a website that, uh, that deals with current issues. And uh, I just want to add one more thing as to what we've done lately is we've, uh, we've uh, produced a whole new architectural guide, the Carnegie Hill uh, Architectural Guide. And it covers not just the historic districts mm -hmm. and not just the landmarks, but every building in Carnegie Hill. And Carnegie Hill extends from 86 to 98th Streets mm -hmm. and from 5th Avenue to 3rd Avenue. So it's quite a large area. And it's got, uh, and this is a, it's a fabulous book. We've already sold about 1,500 uh, copies. Mm -hmm. And it has, uh, it has tours that you could uh, walk yourself. It has about eight or 10 tours in it. Mm -hmm. And the list of the architects and the dates the buildings were built and a brief description. So we're, we're delighted with this. That's really it's exciting. Going be, it's going to be buyable in Barnes & Noble very soon. But well, we're not supposed to be promoting anything, but because <laughs> it's a civic, civic organization, well, that's great to know. This is wonderful yeah. to learn about the architecture. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and we have the vocabulary in it. And it's a really a learning tool. And uh, we're eager to get this out to the schools so that children can learn about these mm -hmm. fabulous historic buildings that are uh, in all over the Upper East Side. I was actually thinking this is actually a great thing for any architecture students outside of New York City as well. Uh, yes. But now let me move on. You said uh, cur current issues. Yes. Uh, we're seeking to, uh, well, one of the things that we did, we, we created a small historic district between uh, Park Avenue and Fifth and, uh, that covered only the brownstones back in 1974. And then we worked very hard with our first architectural guide back in the mid-80s. And that laid the foundation for an expansion of the historic district. And <clears throat> that occurred in about 1994. And it now encompasses, that encompassed about 40% or 40 to 50% of Carnegie Hill. We are now seeking to have all of Park Avenue. So we're seeking for an extension of the historic district. Only currently four blocks of Park Avenue are in the historic district. We want to extend it from 86 to 96 streets, all 10 blocks. And we're working with another organization, uh, many uh, are members of the community board, to, uh, to extend the historic district from 79th to 86. So it'll be, mm -hmm. it'll be a continuum from the low 60s all the way up to 96th Street. We're also seeking to expand the historic district between, for the first time, between Lex and Third Avenues for the 94th and 95th Street blocks, because all those the, those are brownstone houses, all designed by uh, Tom and Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, the, perhaps the most prolific architects in New York City of the and the brownstone area, certainly for Manhattan. So those are those are two uh, uh, those are two historic districts challenges, landmarks challenges. Uh, we are also uh, faced with uh, with uh, quality of life challenges, and that includes the signage right. uh, uh, that we're working together with mm -hmm. uh, the 86th Street Merchants Association because we feel strongly that uh, that signage can improve a neighborhood immensely, and we New Yorkers deserve better signage, and the, the, the laws are already on the books. It's a matter of enforcing What's them. And it's a matter also of communicating, not only with landlords, but with the new shop owners. Uh, you, you know, a store signage, if a store lasts, can last for 20 years. Uh, maybe the average store is, is 10 years. So store signage creates a tremendous impact over the long run. And we even feel that store signage should be discussed at the community board level. Uh, because it, not, not the because the owners would then see what the community really wants. Mm -hmm. A lot of times owners say, well, if we'd only known. So it's a huge communication problem. And, and we need more city enforcement mm -hmm. too. I, uh, uh, because there had been a moratorium that had lasted about uh, one and a half years and it actually lasted longer than that. But we need the city to help us. Uh, certainly the elected officials are very good. Daniel Gorodnik, Jessica Lapp, and, and, uh, and uh, Micah Kellner have been very, very active in helping us. But we, we need more help. Yeah. Well, I think what you're describing, too, is almost environmental pollution. It's visual pollution. And you walk down the street, and you're bombarded with just all side types of signage that, that are Ill illegal. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
you know, the, the problem is that um, I think as a community, we're not taken seriously by the city. I mean, Scott Stringer once said to me, who's the Manhattan Borough yes. President, uh, yes. why has the city allowed 86th Street to reach the level of disgust that it's now? Why did, was it abandoned? And this has been true. Liz Kruger has commented, who's our state senator, um, looking at, and she's taking the lead on vendor legislation in the city. And we're saying now, let's look at the, the issue here. We have um, major issues. We have storefronts now that are empty. Um, there's concern uh, that this could lead to even more safety issues. Yes. And we, we do have crime issues on 86 because of the crowdedness and the lack of availability of walking. And that's taken up by illegal vendoring. And I'm not talking about the individuals being illegal. Uh, I would say they undocumented. It is that they do not belong in the sites they're in and they're violating laws. We have tried to work with the police department about this and they don't feel they have the people power to enforce it. Yes, but 86th Street and the Upper East Side, that's what people talk about. They want to come to and enjoy. We have a lot of tourists that come and we want to make it pleasing not only for our residents um, but for others and you know to that extent we we've worked with Connie Hill and others you can't do this alone and I think the collaboration that we've been doing with the various local organizations has given us more of a momentum and also power I mean uh, the East 86th Street board is a working board we don't have staff um, our I looked, I didn't know you were 40 years old. And yes, I was like, soon. good for you, because we're really two years Thank old, and I'm Thank jealous you. about what you've accomplished. But then I think we haven't done bad in the short time we're around. But you know, we hope that you know, we can continue to add uh, together, uh, because things have been done. We, we have hired people who um, clean the street. We, we have a company we use, and they take the graffiti off. And one of the biggest things, and I don't know where this comes from, we will find empty pallets in the tree pits. Who's throwing this stuff out? And sanitation doesn't pick that up. So when we do fundraising, it's really to beautify and, and all, um, the street and clean up garbage mm -hmm. that's left there. You know, we've gotten sanitation to pick up corner garbage because we're such a trafficked area. But I'm amazed at what you find on the street. I'm not talking about people's furniture that you can go pick up. But just, yeah. I, I just don't understand um, why people are the way they are. You and, mentioned you know. um, uh, your fundraising and um, your 501c. Three. Right. I don't know what it is. Okay. You explained it to me once, explained it to me okay. and everybody else. 501c3. Okay, yeah. And, and Carnegie Hill is yeah. also, yeah. Uh, under the IRS code, it, there's a range of like 11 different kinds of nonprofits. When we were formed, we chose the 501c3, which is the charitable uh, organization and where people can give donations and it's tax free and we're eligible to apply for grants, the foundations and the government. And, and we did that because part of our mission is to educate the community as to uh, what the issues are in the community and you know we've begun with the um, things that are uh, one can see with their own eyes and to educate them around certain rules and regulations but also taking care of the trees and what a, a flower can do and what a tree can do for street um, but we've also gotten into construction safety this is a big issue we've had a lot and we will be having a forum May 14th at the uh, Park Avenue Methodist Church on 86th Street, uh, where we'll be talking about our vision for 86th Street, but we'll also be talking about construction safety, and then trying to get people to volunteer to become part of the association. But uh, the incorporation we have is we're, we're eligible to receive donations from individuals, and they're tax deductible, and we also can get grants from foundations. So any foundation that's out there we really could use uh, some help uh, to do it.
Yes, our, our organization uh, is a 5013C, mm -hmm. and, and uh, we, we couldn't have survived without that. And uh, we survive on membership contributions. And that's why we are so active in getting the word out with our newsletter and involving the, the uh, members of the community. And uh, people see things, they send us emails, what about this sign over there, or what about graffiti over here? And we, you know, we, we respond, and we have someone that works one day a week just removing uh, 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 paint from, from lampposts uh, or repainting the lampposts mm -hmm. and uh, removing the posters from lampposts and removing graffiti where he sees it. And <clears throat> so that's, and also I want to say 80, 86th Street is very important to Carnegie Hill because it's our lower border. And when those wonderful historic lamps finally come, come up to uh, to uh, Lexington Park and Fifth Avenue uh, will be delighted and it, because we have historic lamps in, in certain parts of the historic district and we want to expand that even more. But that's going to make a huge visual impact. Yes. Yeah. And also we have a big signage issue at 86 and Lex, which is the movie theater. Can the Dwayne Reed Re sign, oh which is God. illegal. The movie theater. <laughs> but it is, illegal, it is and, illegal and we have been working with the Department of Buildings on that and um, uh, we should probably see it come down. It takes about six months to go through all the legal steps. But one of the things that, and we've tried to, let me say, first talk with the owners of the businesses. And I have to say, they don't want to hear from us. But we have a major problem with Best Buy, Spanners, Staples, PC Richards probably is the most egregious as far as their attitude, and yet that's a family store. You know, it's about, they advertise this. And so we were hoping that they would participate in the community, um, and they haven't. So now we've had to take action to say, we must now bring in the, the enforcement people to say, this is unacceptable, unacceptable, because it gives a message to young people and, and to children that you can violate the law and get away with it. And we don't want them to, or particularly as we educate the younger people and the, the kids about signage. We don't want them to then say, okay, here's a problem, here's a problem. And then they say, so how come you can't fix it? And what are we saying if they, yeah. we're asking them, particularly with um, a, a reinvigoration of community service and getting involved through the new administration in Washington, mm -hmm. what are we going to say to people? Oh, sure, get involved, but guess what? You can't do anything? No. We want to say, you can do it, and we want to give you the tools to do it. So that's where we're at with that. Well, you know, you, you bring up something was my next question. And by the way, we had a five-minute warning, so. Okay. Um, uh, one thing I definitely want to cover, because the, one of the missions of this show is to get people involved. So you would mentioned that you're going to have an event where you're going to look for more volunteers. Do you um, look for more volunteers for your group? Uh, what's your Hello? website? Yes. Um, how can people get involved? Well, we have a website, uh, www.carnegiehillneighbors.org, uh, uh, and uh, so they can they can they can see what what events are being scheduled, and they can see what what our major concerns are. There's a landmark section. We have certain landmark issues that are coming up. The we have a uh, uh, the, the, the Russian Orthodox Church at East 93rd Street and Park wants to make a two-story addition to that uh, beautiful landmark uh, created, uh, designed by Delano Aldridge, the famous architects of the, of the early uh, 20th century. And uh, we want to prevent that from happening because it will alter the look of that building tremendously. And uh, so we, 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 we have constant, uh, constant issues and battles that we would like to involve our membership in but especially the quality of life issues. And I think 86th Street, for example, we work so closely with, yes, with uh, Elaine's uh, group because, and we have overlapping yes. uh, memberships in the groups. Uh, Susan Gottrich, who has been so active mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. store signage and, and, and trying to clean up our streets. And we have the challenge of Lexington as it, all up and down Lexington, there's, there's a problem of store signage and we want to involve that part because the signage on Madison Avenue is much better but we want Lexington to look just like Madison Avenue. And then, of course, as it meets 86th Street, we want that, right. that corridor, that's our southern border, we want that looking good, too. Mm -hmm. And, and that, it's going to create a lot of effort on the part of the city, 
city's department, uh, transportation, sanitation, yeah. buildings, especially, of course, buildings. And uh, so that's, that's our challenge. And, and to make Lexington walkable, because with all the fenders there, and 86th Street, walkable. Yeah, I, th I think that, uh, and let me just give, the best way to reach us is our email. It's east 86 Street ST at gmail.com. We have a website. It really, we're in the process of updating again, but that's the 80, East 86th with a TH street spelled out, association ASSN dot com. Mm -hmm. um, and our area really goes from 83rd Street about up to about 91st Street. Um, and we, we do overlap the concentration, and we go down to East End Avenue. The concentration has been to clear the corridor before we then, what we're hoping is we will keep displacing things we don't want until they're, they're, they're no longer there. That's right. Okay. Uh, but um, our focus, and I, and I think as I said before, we need to work with others. And our board is out there. They are the eyes and the ears. And uh, volunteers, absolutely, we have people who are watching signage, uh, anything going illegal on the street, uh, helping us with the plantings, the, the cleaning. Um, so it's, it's a range of things. And what we really want is help for the local resident or somebody who works in the area to go in and begin to talk to the storekeepers about what That's we right. want for the we community. Have to, I have to tell you, we're out of time. This is the fastest okay. show we've ever done. We okay. hardly got to okay. the questions, so we're going to have to do part two sometime. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. This has been great. This has been Community Board 8 Speaks. I'm Monica McCain, and the website for Community Board 8 is cb8m.com. And um, so we look forward to having another session, learning okay. more about your neighborhood association. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. We'll bring you up to date on what right. we're doing.